in 2007, a lady and her husband caught a plane to Australia with Academy Award winning director George Miller. I don't know if you know much about him, but George Miller is the man who made the Mad Max movies Academy Award winner because George Miller had just won an Academy Award about five days previous to this encounter about this couple. And he had received this award winner uh, uh, for directing the movie Happy Feet. You remember the, you know, the, the movie Happy Feet, right? This couple were in the non-priority entry queue at Sydney Airport. And suddenly the, hus- the, the husband spots George Miller and starts yelling to this poor tired man in the line, you're George Miller, you are George Miller. You just won an Oscar. Congratulations, George, congratulations. The news began to spread through the whole crowd. <laughs> Uh, the news begins to spread through the whole crowd. It's George Miller. It's George Miller. Congratulations. Congratulations. And all of them were crowding around him, patting him on the back. Now, can you guess what George Miller did next? Well, he turned to the man and said, you know what? I've got it. I've got my award right here right now in this backpack. Do you wanna see it? And right then and there, George Miller flipped his bag off of his shoulders, unsipped the sip, and there it was, not wrapped or anything, just dumped in the bottom of his backpack, a 24 karat gold plated Academy Award. Can you believe it? A 24 karat gold plated Academy Award in a backpack for crying out loud in the non priority entry queue, Sydney Airport, Australia. <laughs> and George Miller reached in and lifted up out of that bag, and everyone began to crowd around him, taking turns touching the price. And as I think about that story now, I do wonder, what on earth was George Miller doing in a non-priority entry queue, right? And why was his award right there in the bottom of his backpack, unwrapped with his half-eaten plain snacks, his smelly plain socks, and his open packet chewing gum? (laughs) What a crazy place to put an Academy Award, right? Now, how about this for a true story? In a room for the animals, in a feeding trough. What a crazy place to put the hope of the entire world, Jesus Christ. That is where God puts him, right? Isn't it? Do you know what a feeding trough is? That's where the pigs, the horses, and all of the animals eat from. And that's where Jesus was laid. That's what Jesus was born. Let's let's, let's uh, read in Luke chapter 2, verse 1 through 7. All right, Luke chapter 2, verse 1 through seven and the bible says the following and it came to pass in those days that a decree that a decree went out from caesar augustus that all the world should be registered all right verse two this census first took place while Quirinius was governing syria all right, verse three. So all went to the to be registered, everyone to his own city. Verse four. Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was one of the houses. He was of the house and lineage of David. To be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. Verse 6. So it was, 
that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in a swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Mm. Jesus, who is able to free people imprisoned by their bad decisions. Jesus, who is able to give humanity a renewed relationship with the Creator God. Jesus, who is able to transform individual lives and whole communities for good. Jesus, who is able to break the power of death and offer the gift of eternal life. Jesus, the King of glory, the Son of God, mighty as, might as well have been sipped up in a used backpack. Because when his family gets to Bethlehem, his teensy tiny town, not big enough for a hotel, the guest lodging is full and they have to sleep among the animals. And when Jesus is born, his mama puts him in a feeding trough. It's a crazy place to put him, isn't it? crazy place to put the son of god a crazy place to put the hope of the entire world did you ever think about why why the animal room why a feeding thruff that is god right and every part of the nativity story has been carefully orchestrated by him nothing is an accident nothing is impossible to organize for god it's not like God failed to make his hotel reservations on time, right? Jesus could have been born anywhere in the world. Why was it so important that there was no room in the end for Jesus? Why was it so important that he be born on a hay dust floor with the animals all around? How about if we flip the question around? Let's ask the what ifs. Well, what if Jesus was born in a king's palace? What would that mean for the world? He would certainly have great, have had a safety and, and privilege and access to great powers, right? But, but listen to this. How would I, how would you and I reach him? Me, you, would we have to wait in line or stand outside the palace gates? What if Jesus was born in a nice suburban family home? What would that meant for the world? I mean, it'd be, feel great to know that Jesus was like a lot of us, right? A lot of people. But what would it mean to the homeless folk? When God commits to coming to earth, would a suburban birth say he's too good to be like one of them? But here, amongst the animals... Among their sweat and dung, and no one could say, a little baby's out of my reach. No one could say he's too good for me. No one could say he doesn't understand my life. I love Isaiah puts it. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 57, verse 15. The Bible says <clears throat> the following. For thus says the high and lofty one who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place with him who has a contrite, listen to this, and humble spirit. Mm. To revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the country once. Wow, mercy. I love it. Isaiah teaches us that while humanity might spend all of its energy building very tall towers and buildings, right? God is the builder, not of these tall ones, but perhaps God is a builder of trenches. You know what a trench is? A trench is a narrow ditch dug by troops to provide a place for shelter from enemy fire. 
<laughs> when God had the chance to offer a gift of hope for the whole world, he put that hope where anyone in the world could reach him. God put Jesus where Fatima could reach him. Let me tell you a story about Fatima. Fatima had best friends. She went with with, uh, she went to her suburban school after school like a normal 13-year-old girl. She would come home and do homework. But she hated doing homework. She hated doing that. Her favorite part of the day was being done with homework so she could run around in the backyard with her 11-year-old brother and play soccer. The favorite soccer team, by the way, is Real Madrid. But then Fatima couldn't play soccer for a long time or go to school. Not after Fatima and her brother Mohammed and their mother Manha fled Aleppo for Lebanon. You see, the place where Fatima and her family were forced to live didn't have a backyard. Their mother paid $140 to rent a, a, a rent a month to pay for their accommodations that had no sewage, no water, no heat. Just one single overhead light bulb. Because Fatima Muhammad and Maha were living together as Syrian, Syrian refugees in a chicken coop. Mm. See, we might hope that their story is an anomaly, right? Like it's the exception to how normal life should look like. Like a, a one-off. But here's the thing, it's not... Like all over Lebanon, refugees fleeing from Syria were made to live in structures that uh, the Lebanese people previously built for their animals. Mercy. Like these people were living where the Lebanese people meant their animals to live. The Al Asabab family who managed to flee, to flee Aleppo, all together, mom, dad, and eight kids, the 10 of them, lived together in a space 10 feet by 12 feet, paying 100 a month for a cow shed that when they moved in, had a leak roof and cow manure under food, under their foot. Mm. I must tell you, it never made more sense to me why Jesus was born among the animals until I learned about the Al-Asab family. I wish even now that I could go into that cow shed where they slept and point to that feeding trough and tell that mother who feels ashamed to lay her little boy in it as his bed. To tell her, hey, I need you to know Dear lady, dear mother, I need you to know that God of the whole universe, the God of the whole universe, laid his own little boy in a feeding trough, just like that one. Just so you could know that even now, God is not too good for you. He's not out of reach for you. The hope of the world is for you too. Mm. I wonder if she heard those words. <sighs> I wonder if her life would change. Now, I pray to God that none of us ever know what it is to be a refuge. But you should know that wherever you end up, it doesn't matter how lowly you become. God has put the hope of the world in a place where you can still reach him. Amen. When you are tempted to the point of going out of your mind, God has put Jesus there. You can still reach him. When you are under such stress that you feel you might sweat blood, listen to this, God has put Jesus there. You can still reach him. When you are grieving, a grief you feel you cannot bear, God has put Jesus there. Amen. You can still reach him. Glory to his name. 
When you are completely alone, Jesus has been there. When you are dying, Jesus is there. When you are in the chicken coops and cow sheds of the world, God has put the hope of the world there too. God has put the hope of the world where anyone in the world can reach Jesus Christ. In a couple of weeks, you'll wake up and it'll be Christmas morning. And perhaps some of someone may have left you a few presents around the Christmas tree. Let me tell you something. When you see them this year, 2020, be thankful. Be thankful that those presents were not left on a high shelf or dropped off on a top, on the top of your roof. No, those gifts were left low under that tree so that even the littlest ones in the family can reach those presents. Listen to this. I'm going to say this again. Be thankful that those presents were left on, were not left on a high shelf or dropped off on the top of your roof. No, those gifts were left low under the tree. So that even the littlest, the littlest, littlest ones in the family can reach those gifts. And remember, that this is what God did with the one who can rescue us, right? This is what God did with the one who can really love us, with the one who can save us from our sins. Amen. He put him in a lowly place, wrapped in cloths and in a feeding trough so that anyone can reach him, even the little one in the family, even the world's refugees, even you. And for that, I want to say, praise your holy name, God. You see, some folks are raised in the church about, hey, be silent. Hey, don't be running around. Hey, this is God's sanctuary. We must be quiet. We must be, you know, that God is right here. But we don't paint a picture that God is close, right? We paint a picture that God is always in heaven, that God is always very far away, and that he perhaps is unreachable. Perhaps that's one of the reasons why why churches back in the day they were big they were built so big and so gigantic that when you walked in you felt so little and that is true that we are little but what is not true is that that God is not reachable that God is with 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 great distance and that is such a lie from the enemy i want to leave two things with you today one is that whatever you are going through today in this life, in this 2020, in this Christmas season, man, Jesus has been there. God put a Jesus in their shoes, in your shoes, and he knows exactly what you're going through. And two, be thankful and be joyful and be happy and praise his holy name because he's not far away. He is near. He's not so much, so much up there in, in, in heaven, like super high, but he was born in a feeding trough, not in a palace, not in some type of castle, but in a lowly place. So you and I can have access to him. So, be thankful and praise God's name for today there is hope for you and I. And the greatest gift that you and I have received and will ever receive for Christmas is the gift of Jesus Christ. Can I pray with you? Father, we just want to say thank you today, Lord, because you know what we go through. Jesus has been put in a place, Father, where he can feel where he has felt what we have felt, Lord. He has felt what we feel now, Father. And you know every little single detail of our lives, Lord. So 
thank you for that, Father. And secondly, Lord, thank you. Because Jesus was not born in a castle or in a palace, Father, but was born in a lowly place that everyone in this world could have access to him. Father, we praise your name for the greatest gift you have given humanity. And today, Lord, we say thank you and we say come in to our hearts because we want to praise your name. We want you to live in our hearts, Father, in this Christmas season, Father. May you be born in our hearts. In the precious name of Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. Believe it, live it, share it. God bless you.